Hello, my name is Pete Sears. For the next hour, I'm going to attempt to give you a few pointers on how to play the piano keyboard. This DVD is designed primarily for beginners, though there are many parts which may be of interest to more advanced players. Perhaps. It's a step-by-step -step approach which will hopefully allow you to move along at your own pace and achieve a level of proficiency where your playing takes on a life of its own. Like anything else, the most useful approach to learning the piano keyboard is to study each exercise thoroughly before moving on to the next section. This will take patience and practice. And the more you practice, the more chords, related scales and music theory you'll be able to use to express your musical ideas with, which is especially important in the world of improvisation. you can skip around the DVD as much as you like and I may occasionally repeat information along the way to help reinforce concepts that I feel are important for your overall knowledge of the keyboard. If you have any interest at all in playing music for a living You'll need a good dose of tenacity, the willingness to work very hard and a lot of luck. It also helps to be an eternal optimist and maybe slightly insane. But maybe making a living in music wasn't what you had in mind when you bought this DVD. So let's just have some fun, and only you can decide what to do with your newfound virtuosity. All right, posture. <coughs> first, the first thing you'll need to work on is how to sit correctly at the keyboard. Posture is very important, especially if you're playing for extended periods of time. How you hold your body can affect and at the same time be a product of your attitude towards the tune you're performing. Attitude is important. It can give your music that little extra something. Basically, I have horrible posture, all hunched over and Scrooge-like. I probably shouldn't recommend it, but my hunch, hunched over, sort of Dickinsonian posture, I suppose I'll call it, seems to help me draw on a melancholy, moody feel. Or perhaps a dig in and don't mess with me feel. Especially when I'm playing in front of an audience. At least it unconsciously feels that way to me. Of course, it probably looks completely ridiculous and uncomfortable to everyone else, but it makes me feel good. I personally wouldn't feel right sitting up straight and grinning at the audience every few seconds. But if that feels right for you, go for it. However, to avoid backaches, especially when practicing, I advise sitting in the classic piano playing posture, which I'm told looks something like this. Keep your back straight, your feet resting firmly on the floor, your forearms and hands should be parallel to the ground with your hands slightly arched and relaxed. You'll need a decent chair of the correct height to sit on. The classic piano bench, which doesn't have a back, is approximately 19 inches high by 30 inches wide. It's best if you can use an adjustable bench or a chair to fine tune your comfort level. I often use a drum stall on the road because they're adjustable and easy to carry to gigs. But for home, a bench or chair works best. A 
If you are using an electric keyboard, make sure the stand is adjusted so the keyboard is as close as possible to the height of a regular piano, about 29 inches. With an electric keyboard, you may want to use a headset. Instead of an amplifier and speakers in the early stages of your training, especially when you're hacking and clanking away at the notes trying to get something to work. These days, most electric keyboards have a headphone input as an option in case you don't want to use an amplifier while you practice. Whatever feels right for you and, and your surroundings, of course. You can take the headset off and plug into an amp. Or use the built-in speakers when you have something impressive worked out and you want to show off to your family and friends. You'll be able to proudly display the results of the irritating key noise that's been wafting relentlessly through the house for hours. Because you can't hear anything in the room but the clicking. Okay, it sounds like this. Over and over again all day. Drives people nuts. If you happen to be using a real piano, then be sure to warn fellow lodgers in advance so they can escape the scene gracefully. This is very important. Everyone in the house will of course be extremely happy about your intention to become a world-renowned pianist and very proud of your tenacity and resolve in practicing your scales. But they may want to go to the park or the movies anyway. Just so they don't distract from your genius. Another point about digital keyboards, try to stay away from the transpose button. This can inspire bad habits. Not that I'm any great example, I admit I've occasionally used the transpose button when thrown into the deep end at a live show, especially with a capo wielding guitarist I'd never played with before. I'd sometimes transpose the piano key to the chord shapes he's playing so I could read his fingers like a chord chart. If the guitarist has a capo on the 6th fret, for instance, and plays the standard folk G chord shape, he's actually playing a D flat. And if there are many frequent changes, things can get confusing very fast. However, I told myself I would try to stay away from the cheating button and listen to the chordal relationships of the tune. The chordal relationships of the tune. This is important, which, are, which they're the same regardless of whatever key you're playing in. This is something well, you will hopefully understand more after working with this DVD. It's also very important you practice the following exercises and chord sequences in a variety of keys, including B flat. Uh, B flat's a key commonly used when horn players are present. Each key will have its own mood and feel, of course. You can delve into the complexities of the keyboard as far as you want to. The satisfaction is in the journey. I'm going to begin by showing you something that's easy, fun and hopefully inspiring to play. Music teachers may cringe at this exercise, but I doubt many music teachers brought this DVD. I suspect you brought it primarily to have fun. We'll begin digging a little deeper into the more technical mysteries of the keyboard in a few minutes. I'm going to show you how to do this exercise now, but you can of course play around with it any, any time the mood takes you. Either way, the reason it hopefully sounds good to you will make more sense later in the DVD. Okay, place the little finger of your left hand over the D note below middle C. And this is middle C here. This is the D note below middle C. Now 
Now play the D note with your little finger, also known in piano music, fingering as the fifth finger. Now play it again, but this time add the F note with your third finger. That's the F note. Now add the A note with your second finger. Play all three notes together at the same time. And you have a minimum you have a triad. It's the minimum notes required to make a chord. You'll also be playing the moody and happy sad chord of D minor. Let's listen to those tones. You can also play the sustain pedal during this exercise, if you like, but don't get into the habit of using it all the time. And if you do use it, lift your right foot off the pedal every few notes so it doesn't turn into a ringing, noisy mess. Unless that sounds good to you, of course. Practice playing this simple D minor chord with your left hand for a minute or two. Let the tones sound out and listen to the beautiful mood they create. Now add the thumb, also called the first finger, as I said before, of your left hand and play the octave, D. That's eight notes up in the scale from the low D you are playing with your little finger. The extra note makes a richer sounding D chord. Four notes playing. Now move your thumb down a whole step to the next white note, which happens to be a C, and play it with the other notes. is a regular D minor and this is with the C. This makes a D minor 7 chord. You can make any 7th chord in any key you happen to be in simply by counting up 7 notes in the scale. C, the seventh note up, or in C major, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If you're feeling adventurous, you can move your thumb down to the next white note, which is a B. If you're in, we go back to D minor here. So there's D, D7, with the thumb on the C. Okay, go down to the next white note, as I said, the B. And this creates a D minor 6 chord. Notice the subtly different moods of each chord. Moving your thumb around just creates different and interesting sounding D minor chords. This sort of chordal experimentation is one of the keys to improvisational playing. Now place your right thumb, or first finger, of the right hand, over any D note farther up the keyboard. You can always find the D note by locating C, which is the white note just below and to the left of the two black notes see these black notes repeating themselves, the same pattern all the way up the keyboard. Two black notes. It's just below that. That's middle C. That's the C note. And then go up one to the D. So if you want to find C, find the two black notes and go down a half step to C and then up you also find middle C that way, but 
down here, but you'll get to that in a minute. You'll see that the note patterns repeat themselves over and over again for the entire keyboard, like I just said. You know, this is like an octave here. All these notes, you see the pattern, the two and the three black notes, and these notes I mean, from C to C, C to C. All these, all these are called octaves, eight notes apart. They go up the keyboard all the way down, and they're all this one little section here. You'll see all these relationships work the same here, same here, same here, these, all these different octaves. So you're learning this range, you know, you, you, you're, you're well on the way. So play the D minor chord once, and hold it down, and let it rest and listen to the melancholy, beautiful tones of your hopefully tuned piano. Now while the tones of your D minor chord are still sounding, Play a D with your right hand, followed by any series of white notes that takes your fancy in any order. fun and experiment with it, make up some licks. It just so happens that the white notes you're playing are all in the D minor Dorian mode scale. It's called the Dorian mode scale. After you played around soloing in the Dorian mode for a while, try playing the scale with a B flat instead of a B. And you find B flat by dropping the B down a half step to the black note immediately below it, which is a black which is which is a B flat. So from the black from the regular B drop down a half step to a B flat. This slight change puts you in what's called the Aeolian mode. A natural minor scale. Aeolian with the B flat in the scale and the Dorian with the B in the scale. So this is the uh, natural minor with that B flat. the B
different scales we're going to work on create their own unique mood. There's nothing wrong with either approach. The Aeolian, tetra minor, or the Dorian, are all popular modes to solo in. Neither is correct or incorrect. The music would just have a different feel and take you and the listener to another space. Try experimenting with it. And remember the rules are just a starting point. You make the music your own. Okay, enough fun for now. Let's get down to work. Okay, each key of a piano keyboard represents a specific musical note. They are each named by using certain letters of the alphabet. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. If you look carefully, you'll see that there is a pattern of white notes relative to black notes that repeats itself over and over again for, the, for all the 88 keys of the keyboard. I know I said this before already, but, uh, but it's important to, re to remember this. If you concentrate on learning the names and relationships of the notes of one octave from root, note of the key you are in, also referred to as the tonic, the root, the tonic. To the same note, an octave higher in C, say, can you hear the same note, but higher? Or if it was in D? Or if it was in G? That's the octaves. E flat. F sharp. This will open up the entire keyboard to you once you figure this stuff out. <laughs> One octave is eight steps from the bottom to the top, regardless of which key you're in. Like I said. So in a minute, I'll show you the key of C major and how you can play its eight notes. The I this is the Ionian C major scale. Or 12 half steps, if you also include all the black notes. Most Western music is based on the 12 half steps between the root of the scale and the note of the same name an octave higher. These notes are starting on middle C, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C. Back to C, an octave higher. Any one of these 12 notes, any one of these 12 notes, as their own scales consisting of eight notes or steps. Two keys side by side, black or white, are called a half step. That's a half step. That's a half step. That's a half step. That's a half step. Two keys separated by another key are referred to as a whole step. C to D, separated by C sharp, the black note there, that's a whole step. F sharp to G sharp, separated by G, that's a whole step. Anything like that. And of course E to F, that's a half step. There's nothing, there's no notes in between that one. Two half steps equal one whole step. So that's one step, half step I mean, sorry. C sharp to C to C sharp, that's a half step. C sharp to D, that's a half step. But that creates one whole step. C to D is a whole step. When you play all the half steps in succession like this, called a chromatic scale. Steps are really just the intervals or distance between the notes. 
if you play the very next note up or down, it's called a half step, also known as a semitone. Skip a note up or down and it's called a whole step or a tone. The relationships between the steps in various keys help you work out the kind of scale or chord you want to play. Major, minor, diminished, and so on. We'll get, we'll, we'll get to structuring chords a bit later. You'll find sharps and flats on the keyboard when you drop down a half step to a black note from an adjacent white note, or go sharp a half step by playing the black note above it. For example, find the white D note and drop down a half step to the black D flat. Or try going up a half step to the black note D sharp. Of course, if you started on F sharp and went up a half step, you would play the white colored G note. If you went up a whole step from F sharp, you'd play G sharp. Down a whole step from F sharp would give you E. See, the whole step with the F in between. If you began on the F sharp and went down a half step, you would play F. And if you play the C, play the next note up, which in this case happened to be a black note, you would have stepped up a half step or a semitone to C sharp. If you start on C and skip the next note up to D, you've traveled a whole step or a tone. Play the next note down from C and you've traveled a half step or a semitone down to B. Happens to be a white note. I'll carry on a bit more. Just, oh, this is an important stuff to reinforce this concept. If you start on C and skip to the next note down, you've traveled a whole step or a tone to B flat. That's a black note. This applies to all the notes. Try starting on the F note and moving up a half step to F sharp. And try F sharp, moving down a half step to E, or a whole step from F to E flat. <clears throat> okay, let's try G. Move up a half step to G sharp. You follow along on this, I hope. G to G sharp, or a whole step from G to A. Down from G, a half step to G flat, which is also used as an F sharp. As you can see, G flat, F sharp, same note though. This may all seem a little confusing, and it is. Okay, we should begin by learning some scales and practicing them over and over. I know this sounds incredibly boring, but it would be crucial to developing your technique and ease of playing. Learning the scales and understanding how they relate to tunes and melody is the key to understanding the entire keyboard, how to make things sound interesting, and how to play well. The notes in the scale are played one after another in a specific ascending or descending order. Most are eight notes long, and the top and bottom notes have the same name. C, C, E, and E, G sharp, G sharp, F sharp, F sharp, and so on. Scale types have specific names and are built on the root note or bottom note of the scale. The root note, which is the same note as the scale begins on, could, it could start on any of the 12 notes available. The 12 notes available are the chromatic scale. Twelve notes. All 
chordal and tonal relationships I'm going to show you will apply to any key you want to play a tune in. Other than all keys having their own unique mood, you'll often need to transpose a song from one key to another to make it more comfortable for a singer's vocal range. Perhaps the original key is too high or, or low for their voice. The scale is created by a pattern of two kinds of steps, which we've just been talking about. Half steps and whole steps. As I mentioned before, some white keys are side by side and some are broken up by a black key. The step pattern interval between two keys directly adjacent to each other, white or black, is called a half step. Two keys separated by another key are referred to as a whole step. Two half steps equal a whole step. I know I mentioned this before, but, but, but it's, it's, you, know, you really need to get this one. So the step pattern relationships for any major Ionian scale are a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, and a half step. There it is. When you learn one scale, like say the C major Ionian scale, you'll be able, by applying the same step pattern note relationships, work out a major scale in any of the 12 keys. In C, C to D is a whole step. D to E is a whole step. E to F is a half step, as you can see. And F to G is a whole step. G to A, a whole step. And A to B, a whole step. B to C is a half step. Again, no matter which of the 12 keys you are working in, it has no bearing whether the piano notes happen to be white or black. What is important is the step pattern relationship between the notes of the scale. If you play the C scale using the step pattern interval relationships for any major scale, it just happens that all eight notes in the scale are white. If you play the E major scale using the same step pattern intervals for the major scale, this is the same step pattern intervals for a major scale, you end up playing four white notes and four black notes. See, four notes, four black notes. In all cases, the first and eighth notes of a regular major scale are the same. In this case E, then E an octave higher. Or in G, Okay, the E flat major scale starts on E flat, of course, which happens to be a black note. There's the octave of E flat. Notice these notes, these intervals are the same as, as the intervals we used in, in C. This is an important concept to remember because it applies to any key you are playing in. G sharp, F sharp, C sharp, it, is a, it makes no difference. It may look confusing and different when you look at all these maze of notes, but really the distances, the intervals between the notes you're playing are the same as in C, which is easy to see. So you got this is a whole step in C, that was the uh, whole step. Then it went to a half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Those intervals applied to E flat, we still have the same thing. The whole step, whole step, and the half step, and so on.
Okay, let's start with the note that is considered to be in the middle of the keyboard and is easy to identify for beginners. The white key appropriately named middle C, sometimes called C4 because it's the fourth C up from the bottom. As I mentioned before, it's the one just below and to the left of the two black keys. These are the two black keys. Starting with middle C, the notes of the C major scale are like this. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, ending up on C, an octave higher. We are in the key of C major. And here's a chart for you to look at. As I mentioned before, all eight notes in the C major Ionian scale happen to be white ones. But if I move up a whole step to D and play the D major scale, keeping the major scale step pattern relationship from note to note, you'll see we end up playing two black notes, F sharp and C. So F sharp as C. We are now playing in the key of D, of course. The major scale step pattern, which again applies to all keys, is a whole step, D to E, as I'm in D, the key of D here. D to E is a whole step. E to F sharp is a whole step. F sharp to G, that's a half step. See that? The whole step is G to A, and A to B as a whole as a whole step, and B to C sharp is also a whole step, and then a half step to D. Okay, let's find middle C again, so we can work on the correct fingering for the C major scale. If you look at the white keys only, you'll see that when you count up eight notes from C using the major scale step pattern, it ends on C again. As I said before, that's one octave, eight notes. And here's a chart showing the way the fingers are numbered. You may notice that the fingering is different than on guitar charts. This is because of the, because of the added thumb, which is referred to in piano music as the first finger. Which fingers you use to play the different notes of a scale or improvised solo is extremely important to improving your technique and ease of playing. Try to assign a, a finger, a correct finger, to a note in advance. You'll have to think about it at first, but, but eventually it will become second nature. All, the, all these, uh, you know, it makes things go quicker if there's a finger ready to play the note and you know what you're doing. Now let's try playing the C major Ionian scale, concentrating on the correct fingering. Once again, the notes are C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and C again. So let's play all eight notes of the C major scale, one after the other, beginning with the thumb on the root note of the C scale, middle C. Just below the two black ones. <laughs> then use your second and third fingers to play the next two notes, D and E. Because there are eight notes in the scale, and I assume you only have five fingers, you'll have to bring your thumb under to play the next note, which is F. This way you don't run out of fingers before you reach the top of the scale. Using, see, you use your second finger to play the G, and on up the scale with the third and fourth fingers playing A and B, ending on C with the fifth finger. You'll run out of fingers for notes again, so you'll have to bring over your third finger to 
play the E, leaving just two notes to finish the descending scale, D and C. That's the scale of the Ionian scale, C major. Left hand fingering is a little different. Now let's try the natural minor scale, also known as the Aeolian mode. Minor scales and minor chords tend to give the music a melancholy, pensive quality. Most in major scales, which tend to evoke brighter and happier feelings. Well, mostly, there are exceptions, of course. Learning the different minor scales can be a challenge, but considering all the solo impossibilities they open up, it's definitely worth it. You actually played a D minor chord in the opening exercise we played earlier. Minor scales flat the third note of the scale, the third note, is the third note in C, flat it, and the step pattern, so a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, a half step, a whole step, a whole step, so for the scale of C minor, you begin again with the thumb on middle C, start, with the, start up the scale again, C to D, is a whole step, but this time when we get to the third note in the scale, instead of playing the regular E note, we'll flat it, flat the note by dropping down a half tone to E flat, which in this case, the C scale, happens to be a black note. Okay, E to E flat, third. Remember we're now following the step pattern for a minor scale. So start again on the root note, the C minor scale sounds like this. The notes for the C minor scale are the C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. You notice a moodier feel to the scale. Minor scales can use flats and sharps depending on what key you're in. If you play the if you play the A minor natural scale by playing the minor scale step pattern, you happen to end up only using white notes in the scale. A to B, whole step, B to C, half step, C to D, a whole step, and D to E, a whole step, E to F, that's a half step. F to G, a whole step, and G to A, a whole step. The harmonic minor step pattern for any key is whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step plus half step, half step. So the notes for the C minor harmonic scale are C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B, C. And that's the bit that gives it the call sound here. It makes it a little different. harmonic scale is used a lot in classical piano music. Another variation on the minor scale often used in jazz is the melodic minor. 
So the melodic C minor scale ascending flat F G A B C ascending again C D E flat F G A B C however when descending try switching to a natural minor scale C to B flat to A flat G F E flat D C Try working these scales out in other keys. And here's a chromatic scale again for reference. Now let's try the blues scale. Or you can play it real laid back too. scale is very versatile. You hear it in rock, country, jazz and of course the blues. The step pattern for the blues scale is a whole step plus half, a whole step, half step, half step, whole step plus half, then a whole step. So the blues scale in C would be C, E flat, F, F sharp, G, B flat, C. And here's a chart showing the scale written down as well as the step patterns which show the distance between notes. And the step pattern relationships, of course, apply to the blues scale in any key. C blues scale, play the C with your first finger, thumb, E flat with the second, F with the third, F sharp with your fourth, and roll your first finger, the thumb, under to the G, and B flat with your second, and if you want to continue the run up the keyboard past the octave C, bring your thumb under to play the C and carry on up with the same fingering. go back down, play the B flat with your second finger, G with your thumb, and I bring over the second finger for the F sharp, the thumb for the F, second finger for E flat, and the thumb on C. I've no idea if this is correct, it's just what I do. For now, we're just going to learn some right-hand scales to improvise with. We'll get to the blues chord changes later in the DVD. Now I'd like to show you the diminished scale, which sounds quite a bit different than anything we've worked on so far. The diminished chord sounds like this. A 
basic triad, three notes, diminished chord is C, B flat, and G flat. It's often used in a slow blues. For the basic chord though, right, C, E flat, G, flat, C, E flat, G flat, and you can stick the A, and you can find the diminished chord in any key by playing the root note, a minor third interval, diminished fifth, which is a perfect fifth, lower one half step. So if, if you were in B flat major, you'd count up the scale and flat the third note, D, to D flat. And flat the fifth, F, to E. So from B flat regular chord, flat the third note, flat the fifth note. So it's B flat diminished. Here's a diagram of the basic C diminished chord. We're going to play the uh, C diminished chord with the left hand. A C diminished scale to go with it, which is a C, D, E flat, F, G flat, A flat, A, B, and C. Okay, and here's a chart for C diminished. And the step pattern for the diminished. There's a whole, half, a whole step, half, a whole step, half step, whole, and a half again. So just play that for a while. Mess around with playing the C diminished chord with your left hand and the scale with your right. When you get time, try working the diminished scale out in other keys. Chords. Just begin learning some chords to play with your left hand or right hand. But for now, let's just use the left hand to accompany your right hand scales. Be showing you diagrams of the keyboard with the notes you should play colored in gray. You'll also see the notes of the chord written down in the bass clef, the lower set of two five musical staff lines used in written music. The written bass clef is generally played by the left hand, but the keyboard diagram of course applies just the same when played by either hand in any octave. An interval is basically the vertical distance between two notes, which is easier to visualize when seen written down as musical notation. When, the, when these notes are played together at the same time, it creates a harmony. The mood and sound that is created depends on the selection of notes used to make up the chord. So the intervals of the chord can be called harmonic intervals. If you play these notes one after the other in sequence, you are creating a melody rather than a chord, although the two can sometimes run together.
Playing intervals in a sequence of varying note lengths can be called melodic intervals. So you work out the notes of a basic triad chord by playing the first, third and fifth notes or intervals of any scale. Let's begin by working on the C major chord. When you're feeling adventurous, you, you can and should try applying everything you learn to all 12 keys. Use a relative step pattern intervals for different types of chords and scales. There's no hurry, just take your time and try to approach it all with a sense of exploration. Play the root C with the little finger, also called the fifth finger of your left hand. And play the third note up in the scale E with your third finger and the fifth with your second finger. Play these notes together at the same time and you create a nice sounding chord G C major. Again, we're going to use the left hand to sound these chords so we can simultaneously work on scales with our right. Remember, you can flat the third note of any major scale in any key to create the minor version of the chord. To make a C major into a C minor chord, you would flat the third note of the C major scale from an E to E flat. I know I keep repeating myself, but it's, it's a, you know, I'm trying to drum this concept in. You flat the third, create the minor chord. In F, flat the third, that's F minor. In B flat, flat the third, that's B minor. In E flat, flat the third, makes it minor. Okay, here's a chart for C minor. Remember to match the chord you play with the appropriate scale. Minor. Major. And so on. I'm starting things off by showing you most things in the key of C, if you hadn't already noticed. But, I, but as I've mentioned before, the step pattern relationships will apply to all 12 keys. I know I mentioned that before, <laughs> but, you, but, it's, but it's a good, you don't have to get that concept. It's worth the, the hard work it takes to learn all this stuff in the, all the keys, really is. Try to work chords and scales out in other keys whenever you get a chance, whenever you get a chance. So a satisfying way to practice is to play a chord with your left hand Hold it down, listen to the sound and mood it creates and play the appropriate scale with your right hand. You can later add an extra note on top of the basic triad chords by using your left hand thumb to play notes that color the chord. Let's try it in C major again. Fifth finger of the left hand on C, third finger on E, second finger on G. Now put your thumb on C an octave higher. Playing all four notes together of the chord. Bit of a stretch, you get it. Now try moving your thumb down 
a whole step to B flat, which is the flattened seventh in the C scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, flat. It's also called the dominant seventh. Okay, B, B flat. And play all four notes together. This chord is named C7, a dominant seven chord that is used in most forms of music, including folk, blues, rock, and jazz. Here's a chart for C7. Let's try a basic sequence that is used a lot in blues and rock. This particular chord progression is often referred to as the 1 4 5 sequence. sometimes hold up one, four, or five fingers, or other numbers, to represent the particular chord in the sequence they want the musicians to play. You don't see it used too much in rock and roll, though. If a band members see somebody holding up a finger, they might get the wrong idea. This, of course, can result in complete chaos. At least if the band leader holds up the wrong amount of fingers, everyone will sound the wrong chord together, assuming they can count to five or one or more musicians aren't seeing double. So let's work on the 1 4 5 sequence in the key of C. In the key of C, the 1 chord will have C as the root note. Count up four notes in the C major scale. One, two, three, four. And you come to the F, which is the four chord. You count up five notes in the C scale, and you end on G, which is the five chord. One, two, three, four, five. They call this a five chord because it's five notes up. For the exercise, though, Let's make all the chords in the 1 4 5 sequence dominant 7th or flat 7th chords, which again you get by flattening the 7th note in the scale. So in the key of C, let's start with C7 chord that we learned a few minutes ago. Here it is again. Don't worry about the rhythm and bar count for now, just play the chord in sequence and let it hang while you play the C blues scale with your right hand. Okay, start by playing a C chord with your left hand, let it hang. Play the blues scale up or down with your right. scale chart again for reference. Here it is. And if you left then play with the left hand, play the four chord which uh, which is the F. Remember it's found by counting up four notes to F. Continue playing the C blues scale with your right hand. Back to C7, the one chord. Continue playing the blues scale. And then 
G7, which is the V chord. Here's a chord chart for G7. Now play F7 again, which is the four chord. It's the same as here, same as that, just playing it much of the world. Continue the blues scale. And finally the one chord again, C7. Okay, you can sometimes play the five chord again, G7 sort of a turn around back into the one or just stay on the one some people use them some people don't i kind of like like it just by not playing the turn around five just keep it going okay then you begin the sequence all over again practice the one four five sequence until you're reasonably comfortable with it Later, you can begin working out your favorite blues or rock licks with your right hand using the notes in the blues scale. Again, you'll notice that any combination of notes in the blues scale works with the chords of this sequence. Okay, now try and playing C7 again, but this time flat the third, which is E, to E flat, to make it a minor chord. We touched on C minor earlier, but it really sounds nice with the minor seventh in the chord. This creates the chord C minor seven, which has a very different mood to the major chord. Let's play a similar 1-4-5 sequence to the one you just worked on, but flat the third of each chord in the sequence you play. C minor 7, play the chord with your left hand, hold it down, let it ring, let it breathe and play the blues scale with your right hand in between chords. Then for the four chord, F minor seven. Go back to the four chord again to F minor seven. Back to the one chord. Now the five chord, G minor seven. Turn around, G minor 7.
the sequence all over again as many times as you want. Practice this for a while and try substituting G7 instead of G minus 7 for the turnaround, the last five chords. So you get. get to the four chord of a one four five blue sequence try playing a one minor with your right hand and a four chord root note on the bass with your left so here it comes so an F that's a switch to C minor with your right hand It's a nine chord. I'll show you again. If you're in C major, or just playing the blues minor scale work, works too. So when you get to the four chord, play the F with the bass note switch from to a minor C and this creates F9. It's a beautiful sounding chord. I love the nine chord. If you analyze this chord again you'll see you have the chords root note F, the fifth C, the dominant seventh E flat, and nine notes up from the root we got G. That's nine notes up from F. You count all the way, eight notes, nine. That's what defines the chord, G. So, all together it sounds like. It's not always necessary to play the root note of a chord, of course. Uh, this can make building chords very interesting with many different possibilities. Especially if you're playing with a, with a, with a band, you know, and the bass player is taking care of the root note. Okay. Here are some variations on C minor 7. <clears throat> Just use the same notes of the chord structure but starting higher up with different variations. Same chord, same notes. Just moving everything up. This is the root, the C, but, but you don't have to always play that, that's the point. You go like this. We can do that. They're all C minor seven, but we don't, you know, we don't have to do this bass. Okay, now let's just practice going back and forth from C minor seven to F7 for a bit. Work these out. Along with the blue scale, all these quarter relationships and intervals and all that stuff. And other keys. <laughs> you can of course play any of these chords we've worked on an octave higher or more. Higher. 
accompanied by bass notes with your left. again a diagram of these notes for the basic C minor 7 for either hand look like this. The musical notation in this case is written in the treble clef, generally associated but not always with the right hand. As I mentioned before, if you want to start getting into other variations, just remember that you can work out the chords by counting up from the root note. Let's reinforce how you work out a 9 chord. If you want to play C9, it simply means you count up 9 notes from the root note C. Count up 9 notes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9, ending on D, just above the octave of C. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So for C9, you would play C. Let's go the left hand. C with your left hand, and E and G, the seventh B flat, and the D note with your right hand. The D note is a 9 and defines the sound of the chord. It defines the mood, the sound. So you're playing a straight C7 with your left hand, playing the chord defining D note with your right thumb, leaving the remaining fingers of your right hand to add other coloring notes to the chord, like a 13. Here's a chart of C9. The music is written in the treble clef for the right hand, but the notes of the keyboard diagram are the same for the left or right hand. Build the notes of these chords with both hands. To recap, most nine chords use the dominant flat seven plus nine, which in this case would be the D. You can work out a nine chord in any key by counting up from the root note. If you raise the D note a half step to D sharp, you get the chord C7 sharp 9. That's a very cool sounding chord. You probably recognize that chord, you hear it in blues, jazz. If you flat the 9 note, D, to D flat, you get C7 flat 9. Here's a chart of C7 flat 9 with the flattened D note. Flat the third along with these variations and you get another whole set of different sounding C minor chords. Try C minor sharp 9. C minor 7 flat 9. Here's a chart for C minor 9. Now try slipping your thumb off your, of your left hand down a half step from B flat to A. Lift your right hand off. Let's just work with the left hand. There's A, B flat to A. The notes in this chord would be C. B flat, G, and A, which actually creates C minor 6. A is the 6 note up from the C in the C scale. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Try playing a Dorian scale to this chord by playing an A instead of an A flat. That would be C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat, 
Try playing a regular C minor or C minor 7 chord and switching to the Aeolian natural minor scale with the A flat. Then play a C minor 6 and use a Dorian with its A natural note to match the chord. Sometimes the chord symbol may also request you alter the fifth note of the chord in some way, perhaps a flat five or a sharp five. Try to work out which notes you would play if the chord were a C9 flat five. Let's see, what would that be? C9 flat five. There's a C9. There's a five. of a C sharp five, there's a five, raise it up. Let's try working out a C13 flat nine. So you got there's a nine. So C13, nine, flat the nine. Thirteen. So I like that sound. I like that chord. As I mentioned before, you'll need both hands for some of these chords. The notes on top can often dictate the melody of the of the, of the tune. Remember to count up from the root. So you would count 13 notes up from the root of the chord, in this case C, which lands you on A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. A. C9, flat the D to make the C flat, and simply add the A, 13th, C13 flat 9. If you want a solo using these chords for accompaniment, and unless your art Tatum reincarnated, it's unlikely you'll be able to play all these chords with your left hand only. So try building the chords from the third instead of the root. For instance, you could build C sharp 9 with your little finger on E instead of on C on E with the thumb on the sharp 9 D sharp. 